Plugin of the week is the FabFilter Pro C2. So the Pro C2 is actually an update to the Pro C. And uh, so what they've done is they've added in a whole slew of, of new features into it. One, they've kind of given it a new look. So some updated graphics. Uh, they've got some new compression styles that they've added into it. Uh, there's a look ahead feature, a hold feature, which is a very rare one for uh, for compressors, uh, a custom knee control, so you can have control over the knee, a range control, um, which is really amazing, um, a mix control that goes up to 200%, so you can sort of get exaggerated compression, and also oversampling. So that's that's one of the many features that they've added in. So when you actually look at the plugin surface itself, uh, like the Pro Q2, it also has um, um, variable sizes, including the ability to go full screen. So you can actually go full screen with the whole um, thing and do all of your processing this way, which is really, you know, that makes it um, that much more usable, you know. Um, and what you get also is the graphic display. So some of the things are very similar here. So as if, if I start feeding in audio, you'll see audio and the compression characteristic coming in here, right? So now, as I, if I just want to kind of work with some of the, the place where you would start, it'd be working with some of the basic um, uh, characteristic settings. So uh, let me kind of uh, cut off the interactive tips here. Um, so where you set up the different styles is here. So you have clean, and this is like the least or the most unaffected. But then um, what they've done is they've kind of put in program dependent release characteristics. And these are things that are a classic part of many broadcast limiters, where there is an initial quick release, but then a slower sustain to complete off the final release. Some uh, limiters like uh, the uh, Fairchild compressor, actually in its five or six setting on on, um, uh, on the, I'm um, forgetting the, the name of the uh, uh, release control, um, actually has three stages of release that, that extends out to like 20 seconds total. And that's like a classic for broadcast. Um, but here, you know, what you have is these multi-stage, uh, dual stage characteristics in, in different things. So you have clean, you have classic, and I could kind of switch through them. Opto, which has a certain like classic movement. This is the one that's set up particularly for vocal presence. They have a mastering setting. Like a bus processing, like stem processing. Punch setting. A pump setting, which may be more appropriate to like EDM music. And so you can have these sort of starting points that bring in these program dependent release characteristics that can sort of set up like a fundamental building block for what you might be working with. So since we're working with the mix, let's just kind of go to the mastering and start to work with that from a basic thing. Now, when you work with the setting, you have normal settings here, like you actually have your threshold. There's actually some really cool features that they, they have with this. One is that you can listen to the trigger signal. So that will tell you where the signal is actually triggering or what's actually pushing through that's actually going to trigger or cause the compression. And sometimes that's kind of a helpful way of gauging exactly how much that you want. You have a ratio control. It, it defaults to four to one, goes all the way up to infinity to one. But what I like about this is that, you know, for many compression things, the majority of the range kind of sits in here. You know, like, especially for mastering, you might be, have a tendency to use like a lighter ratio. Like one compression technique I like is to use a very light ratio, like 1.1 to one. And then I can sort of use more of a, this with a, with a lower threshold and I still get a minimum of gain reduction. So I can see my gain reduction metering over here and it ends up being a little more consistent. And this can kind of add some um, some settings. There's an auto gain here, which I can kind of compensate for. So I can hear this. And 
this can be a, like a way of like solidifying a mix. And this is like a classic way of bringing a little bit of excitement and depth in, into something. So I can work with those types of things. Um, and then I have, you know, otherwise I can have like normal, you know, uh, characteristics. I could do something that's a little bit more of like a, like a classic SSL type of thing. You know, like, um, you know, where you have like the 30 millisecond attack, 100 millisecond release. Now this is program dependent, but now maybe here if I go to like a classic four to one ratio and kind of work, I can get like a, um, like a subtle kind of mix pump. Uh, okay, work through the error message here. And of course, you have the, 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 the classic display here, which shows you game reduction on the red line. You could see your waveform here. You could also see here the crosshairs as this sort of superimposes over, you know, um, the waveform that's going by. So you can see your threshold kind of cutting across. And then also this, which is the new characteristic, which is the knee control, which I'm going to show in a second. A couple of other things. So you have the, the attack release. Um, there's a look ahead feature, which can be enabled. Um, that's uh, enabled right down here. So what this does is this is sort of a, a thing that you can use when you're dealing with very fast attack and release times where there might be a tendency to get a little bit more distortion. And maybe in my first example, that might've been a place where I could work with it. And you could see this here so I can display the knee or take it away if I want. And what the knee does is it actually creates a smoothing characteristic. I like to call it like a crossfade for your ratio. So if you have a four to one ratio, instead of, well, what would happen is if you had a hard knee, it would um, go four to one like instantly. If I soften the knee, then what happens with the characteristic here is that it sort of fades in that four to one. So it ends up at four to one, but not immediately. And this creates a little bit more of a musical, more simplified um, or um, softer characteristic to the compression. So if I go hard knee, it's gonna pop a little bit more. So let me uh, kind of go a little bit here, add a little bit of makeup gain here for... So there I have it, um, you know, from that perspective, and then I can show you the difference of what that would sound like uh, versus a hard knee. Soft knee. You need to hear the smoothness of it, the softness. Match the game a little better. Slow down, baby, take a moment and breathe. I can hear what you say. Stop for a minute, come sit there with me. So you can hear the hard knee is a little bit punchier and the other one's a little bit softer. So depending upon the style of music and what the original material is, then you could, you know, um, you could get like different kind of characteristics out of it. So the knee control is a very cool, very powerful one in terms of working with it. There's also a unique feature here, and it may not be appropriate to mastering, which is kind of a hold control. And the hold control is kind of cool because 
A hold is a feature that is uh, typical that you would find on something like um, a gate, right, or an expander. And the idea is that once the threshold is exceeded, the gate opens and you could set it so it holds for a fixed number of milliseconds before starting the release cycle. Um, now, what happens here is that when you set a release characteristic, the shape of the release characteristic is affected by the style and the program dependent um, uh, uh, setting that you um, select here from this menu. So when you when you set this up, it will kind of stage its release characteristic. And so if you go to something, for example, like an opto, it'll have an overall slower release total, but it'll have like a little bit more of a quicker dip after the original. So what you can do to kind of offset a little bit of that is to set up the hold control to kind of um, work with it, um, work with it, uh, give it some balance. Very much a characteristic uh, sound. Oops, uh, let me set the correct setting here. So if you listen to this, this will have like a little bit more of a smoothing, sustaining characteristic to the sound, as opposed to a pumping one. Notice the sustain in the, the vocals. So you can hear like how some of those characteristics, you know, can can be affected by the hold control. So it gives you a little bit more of a um, uh, of a control there. The look ahead when you're dealing with fast um, attacks can kind of help to um, uh, help to prevent a bit of distortion. So you can you can go up to 20 milliseconds of look ahead. It just gives you the ability to be a bit more accurate with the processing. The uh, oversampling. Um, is something that also can help to kind of clean up distortion. Uh, it also will add to the processing load and the latency, so you have to kind of think about um, those things. There's also a very cool feature, uh, but that's also appropriate for mastering in terms of the accuracy and all of that sort of stuff. Um, the uh, the other element is, so oh, oversampling, if you're not familiar, basically it takes like four times oversampling would increase um, you know, a nine, a 48 kilohertz session up to 196, essentially, or 192, excuse me. And then that would, you know, then that would essentially be what you would be working at in terms of the processing. Now it ends up back at 48 kilohertz in the end, but, uh, where the accuracy comes, uh, to bear is in the processing, um, accuracy more than anything. So it is not necessarily that benefit. It's more about the accuracy and that reflects in the sound quality. You're not increasing, uh, the sample rate. Um, uh, the other thing is a range control, and this is really cool because what you can do is you can sort of set uh, a, a limited amount, like in other words, you could make it so that no matter what happens, if I set this to 4.07, it will never give me more than 4.07 uh, dB of game reduction. So you're setting like a maximum game reduction thing. And sometimes it's just really cool when working with, um, uh, working with uh, particular sounds where you want to keep... Um, like even with like a vocal or something like that, where you could sort of set a limit on how much gain reduction, which helps to preserve some of the dynamics. So when a vocal goes up really loud, or maybe the vocalist goes into their upper range and it pushes the compression a little bit harder, you're not going to get an exaggerated amount of gain reduction. It's going to actually sit there and allow some of the natural dynamic to kind of push through. A lot of really like amazing controls. On top of all of this stuff, you also have a side chain that you can throw on top of this. So when you throw the side chain in here, what ends up happening with the side chain is that you can actually filter the signal that does the triggering. Um, and there's all um, kinds of options here. 
Uh, you can audition it. This allows you to hear what the sidechain signal is. It can be an external source or an internal source. So if it's external, it would come in from the key bus, in this case, uh, that you set up in Pro Tools. Um, uh, when you manage the sidechain level, you can actually control the overall amount of gain so that that will affect the amount of signal that feeds the threshold um, uh, for that type of thing. And then there's also some stereo linking options, including the ability to have the processing be only applied uh, to the mid, to the side, having the mid trigger only compression on the side signal or the side signals only trigger signal uh, compression on the mids. So you've got all kinds of linking options in terms of the way that you work with the side chain and how it affects the other things that are going on. And then so you've got your three bands, high pass, low pass uh, filter, uh, and a mid band parametric that you can kind of apply and kind of move around and manipulate the signal with. So th there's some, these are very handy, especially when you're getting into individual track settings um, and, and managing all of that. It's a very deep plugin. Um, and, you know, you could probably put on a whole hour demonstration going through a mix with all different kinds of tracks, individual tracks, and, and uh, it's very powerful, especially with all of the style options. That really makes it powerful because it allows you to really emulate the characteristics of, of uh, a lot of uh, vintage style uh, compressors, you know, with the Opto or Classic. I'm not sure if that's sort of an emulation of, um, of like, uh, a tube uh, compression, although I th would think that it would kind of say that, probably more of a solid state type of thing. Um, you know, the mastering, you have some of these different things like the vocal that really helps to push presence into a sound. Um, and these starting places end up being very valuable sometimes, you know, for, for creating something. And this makes it a tool that uh, can sometimes serve the function of many compressors. Uh, instead of having like a huge collection of plugins, this would actually serve a lot of valuable purposes in anybody's collection. So a pretty cool one. A lot of really valuable updates um, here added with the C2. Um, and uh, I think a worth one, a worthwhile one having. So if you have it, they also have an uh, uh, upgrade option um, uh, prices. So you can get some a pretty uh, good discount on upgrading to the C2. Plus it doesn't eliminate the C1, which they still support. So if you have um, other uh, plugin instantiations with the C1, it'll preserve those as well. Um, really cool one uh, uh, by FabFilter. They always make a ton of great products and uh, this one is no exception. Okay, there we have it. Uh, plugin of the week, FabFilter Pro C2.